Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the muscles of the back of the thigh. As an introduction, there are four muscles of the back of the thigh. The semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, biceps femoris and the adductor magnus. Beginning with the semitendinosus muscle, it originates from the inframedial impression on the upper part of the ischial tuberosity. This is the right hip bone. The area that you see here is called the ischial tuberosity. This is the upper part and this is the lower part of the ischial tuberosity. Now the semitendinosus muscle originates from the inframedial impression on the upper part of the ischial tuberosity that is right here. This is the medial aspect, this is the lateral aspect. So this is the inframedial impression on the upper part of the ischial tuberosity right here. It inserts into the upper part of the medial surface of the tibia behind the sartorius and the gracilis muscle. This is the right tibia. The semitendinosus muscle inserts into the upper part of the medial surface of the tibia behind the insertion of the sartorius and gracilis that is right here. This is the insertion of the semitendinosus muscle. The semitendinosus muscle is supplied by the tibial part of the sciatic nerve and its action is that it is a chief flexor of the knee and medial rotator of the leg in the semi-flexed knee. Next, moving on to the semimembranosus muscle, it originates from the suprolateral impression on the upper part of the ischial tuberosity. The semimembranosus muscle originates from the suprolateral impression on the upper part of the ischial tuberosity right here. It inserts into the groove on the posterior surface of the medial condyle of the tibia. These are the condyles of the tibia. This is the medial condyle and this is the lateral condyle. The semimembranosus muscle inserts into the groove on the posterior surface of the medial condyle of the tibia that is right here. The semimembranosus is supplied by the tibial part of the sciatic nerve and its action is that it is a chief flexor of the knee and medial rotator of the leg in semi-flexed knee. Next, we have the biceps femoris. It has two heads, a long head and a short head. The long head of the biceps femoris originates from the upper part of the ischial tuberosity. The short head originates from the lateral lip of the linea aspera, the upper two-thirds of the lateral supracondylar line and the lateral intermuscular septa. The long head of the biceps femoris originates from the inframedial aspect of the upper part of the ischial tuberosity in common with the semitendinosus muscle that is right here. This is the right femur and this is the linea aspera. The short head of the biceps femoris originates from the lateral lip of the linea aspera between the insertion of the adductor magnus and the origin of the vastus lateralis that is right here and it also originates from the upper two-thirds of the lateral supracondylar line right here. So it extends from here to here. It inserts into the head of the fibula in front of its apex or styloid process. This is the right fibula and this is its apex. The biceps femoris muscle is inserted into the head of the fibula in front of its apex or styloid process that is right here. The long head of the biceps femoris is supplied by the tibial part of the sciatic nerve while the short head is supplied by the common peroneal part of the sciatic nerve and its action is that it is a chief flexor of the knee and lateral rotator of the leg in the semi-flexed position of the knee. Moving on to the last muscle, we have the adductor magnus. It originates from the ischial tuberosity, the ramus of the ischium, the lower part of the inferior ramus of the pubis. This is the ischium of the hip bone. The adductor magnus originates from the infralateral part of the ischial tuberosity right here. The ramus of the ischium as well as the lower part 
of the inferior ramus of the pubis right here the adductor magnus inserts into the medial margin of the gluteal tuberosity the linea aspera the medial supracondylar line and the adductor tubercle adductor magnus inserts into the medial margin of the gluteal tuberosity the linea aspera all along its length the medial supracondylar line as you can see right here the medial supracondylar line and finally the adductor tubercle it has a double nerve supply that is the adductor part is supplied by the obturator nerve while the hamstring part is supplied by the sciatic nerve and its action is that the adductor part causes adduction of the thigh while the ischial part causes the extension of the hip please note that the adductor magnus is also a muscle of the medial side of the thigh this is the adductor magnus muscle this is the posterior view of the right lower limb the muscle you see here is the semi membranosus muscle this is the semi tendinosus muscle this is the biceps femoris and this is the adductor magnus i hope you found this video helpful to get updates on my latest videos click on the subscribe button to get notifications tap on the bell icon thank you for watching